Hello, folks. Pod Squad with Wendy Card and yours truly, Kathy Morrison. Here we are. And we thank you for joining us for New Bern Now's Pod Squad for September the 30th, 2021. Already the end of September. Man. This wow. Episode 197. Oh, boy, almost 200 episodes, Wendy. And yeah. what we're doing, we're connecting you with people, places, and happenings in New Bern and surrounding areas. And we want you to join the conversation by commenting on this live stream on New Bern Now's Facebook page. So we do this all the time. So let's do it again. And first, Wendy has a contest. Yeah. And you want to know the question, Kathy? What's the question? All right. Where is Jonestown in the greater New Bern area? Where is it located? Jonestown. Okay. That's, that's the question. Okay. Put it in the Facebook in this, this live stream during the show, and we'll announce um, about 10 minutes before the show ends. So okay. thank you for watching, everyone, and we're really excited. Uh, Kathy, you've got a lot going on at the New Bern Historical Society. We do. The Historical Society, you know, October is tomorrow already, and there's just lots of stuff in, in the whole area here going on in October. And October is our, you know, our big month for, and we're going to do show and tell. Can we oh, see that? Wait a second. Ghost walk. Okay. Oh, wait for it. There it is. Yep. Ghost yeah. Walk. Okay. It's and ghost the, walk time. The theme is. There it is at the bottom. The skeletons in our closets. Yep. That yep. was a, that was a trivia question the other day. Ah, so, good. Yeah. Well, this is our 31st annual Ghost Walk. What is Ghost Walk for those folks who don't know? Ghost Walk is an annual project for the New Bern Historical Society. We reach way into the past and bring back characters from New Bern's past. And they come here and tell you their story. So it's really kind of a time machine. Uh, and each year we bring back a whole new batch of ghosts. So people you saw last year, you're not going to see this year. And the ones you saw the year before that are not going to see this year. So there's a whole new batch of ghosts. Um, this year, it's all outdoors, uh, you know, trying to be safe for everybody. There are two loops in Cedar Grove Cemetery. So and there, there are 13 ghost sites altogether. There's two loops in Cedar Grove Cemetery. Then you'll walk down Hancock Street and there will be ghosts on porches. So you stop and hear their stories and then head for the Atmore Oliver House, which is at 511 Broad Street. And there, there will be a whole batch of storytellers on the back porch there. Uh, you'll also have a chance to get a cookie or something good from the very good bakery. And also back there is going to be the tap snap booth. Part of your ghost walk ticket includes a souvenir photo. Uh, and they'll, that's a, a fun thing, put a neat background behind you. And they'll give you a printed photo. And you have a digital photo that you can share on all of your social media and do whatever you want, send it to grandma, do all those good things. So this is coming up October 28th, 29th and 30th. It's the same thing all three nights and your ticket is good for all three nights. So if you wanna break it up and do a little bit one night or a little bit another, that's fine. Uh, last year, because of COVID, we had very specific time slots and things were limited. Well, this time we're going back to our three nights and, and also um, the three nights all offer the same thing. So you'll be able to see, you know, all the same ghosts on all three nights. You'll be able to do the photographs, the tap snap photos. So everything will be the same on all three nights. Only thing to watch out for is on Friday and Saturday, there's something really, um, thrilling maybe happening at the uh, academy grounds there on Hancock Street and this is this has come to be a a really popular uh, popular event and so you'll see that pop up literally um, at uh, at the academy grounds on Hancock Street and that's so gonna, it's a secret right secret that everybody knows about but we won't tell you uh, <laughs> but, but kind of hang around as you're walking down the street uh, keep an eye on what's going on there Friday and Saturday at the Academy Grounds because it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Um, and you can do things in any order. You don't have to do them in the order. I just said them, the, the cemetery, Hancock and at Moore Oliver House. You can do it in any order. Take your time, do it at your pace and in your direction and have a good time. If you want to 
spend three nights having fun, go do it. If you want to do it all in one night, okay, go ahead. Whatever you want to do. So that's uh, yeah, that's Ghost Walk coming. We want to thank Wendy, who's a sponsor for Ghost Walk. New Bern now is an official Ghost Walk sponsor. Well, we're proud to be. I mean, you're bringing history to life. So New Bern's history to life specifically. So, yeah. But that's that's a lot of fun, and this will be the 31st annual Ghost Walk. So to find out more, give us a call, 638-8558. That's the Historical Society. Or go to ghostwalknewburn.com, and that'll click you right through to all the information there about Ghost Walk. Very then cool. Tomorrow is the second. No, not tomorrow. Day after tomorrow is the second. October the second is the fall ABC sale. We used to do ABC sales once a year indoors at the building but now we're doing it in two pieces so the fall abc sale is coming up saturday it is at the pavilion at the battlefield park at new Bern battlefield park out there you know go like you're going to taberna turn right at the dunkin donuts you can stop and get a donut and a cup of coffee that's good and then as soon as you cross over the railroad track turn left and that will take you to battlefield park uh, battlefield park is a great place you know, this would be beautiful this this weekend to wander through the park. Wonderful, you know, signage that explains what happened there, what it meant to the to the town, to New Bern. But uh, also going on under the pavilion this this Saturday is the ABC sale, and it is kind of morphed into what what they're calling a curated collection. So we're taking, you know, really the the best pieces parts of everything that we had there, and they'll have antiques, art, collectibles, jewelry, tools. Uh, and something else that I'm leaving out, uh, but so, lots of good things. If people don't know what the ABC sale, it's not you're you're not selling. We're not selling liquor, booth. no. right? Or booth? No. no, it's it's uh, started out ABC because it stands for attic basement closet. Because we ask people to clean out their attic's basement and closet and donate their stuff to the historical society, and that's what they've done. This one is going on for thirty-one years too. Wow! So there's and and over the years we have ended up collecting more and more bigger stuff like furniture and antiques and art and things. So it's a really fun, um, you know, a big uh, yard sale. It's a curated, if you will, yard sale. Uh, and it's a lot, it's a good treasure hunt for those folks that like, you know, doing yard sailing and like that, because it is a neat treasure hunt. This is a good one to do. And this is Saturday the 2nd from 9 to 2. Uh, so it'll start at 9. They have to, you know, give them time to get the trucks loaded up at the warehouses, brought to the <laughs> pavilion and unloaded at the pavilion. So don't show up at 6. Come at 9 and, and see what they have. Uh, and they'll be ready for you at 9 o'clock. But if, if you buy anything big and you need to go home and get the truck, uh, that needs to be picked up by two. So, uh, you know, lots of lots of good things going on there. Uh, do I have time for one more? Sure. Okay. Um, I have something something new and different. I'm more show and tell. This is okay. Let's find that. And this is Orville from not the New Bern Historical Society, but this is the North Carolina History Theater. North Carolina History Theater is a brand new 501c3 nonprofit organization. There you go, there's Orville. Uh, and it's gonna do, you know, as its name says, it's a history theater. What the, the mission statement is to celebrate, create and present uh, theatrical works that, that share and teach our history in North Carolina and the history in the United States. Um, it started out with the folks, remember last year, they, not last, was it last year? It was in 2020. The New Bern Historical Society joined uh, in with the folks to present Honor the Musical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we did Honor the- The year the before. Was, it was January 2020, yeah. 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 Or, oh, 20, yes, yes, before. We're already in 21 and-, and Before the pandemic. <laughs> yes, we are rapidly leaving 21. So anyway, they present an honor the musical and they have uh, organized, decided to come together and they're gonna work um, and have established this nonprofit to, uh, to present you know, theater and entertainment and history all combined. Uh, so it's, it's you know, a combination of history and entertainment and they're gonna do Orville. Actually, it's a one man show. It's Bill Hand and his one man show of Orville. 
And that's going to be the launch, the kickoff, the first thing they do uh, as North Carolina History Theater. And that's November the 4th at Captain Rowdy's. It's just going to be a little thing in their banquet room, but it's, it's a, a launch that they're going to do. And um, tickets are available for that. It's a fundraiser. So tickets are $50 a piece. Uh, they're going to get a little bit out of that, which is good. And it will be a good start, a good you know, starting point for that. If you're interested in Orville or in learning more about North Carolina History Theater, go to www.nchistorytheater, spelled E-R. So it's nchistorytheater.org. And you can find uh, tickets for Orville. You can find out more about what they're up to or find them on Facebook. So it's a, a brand new effort and you'll be seeing them around with other stuff. Sounds interesting. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Gosh. And you have okay. something, you have something else? No, what do you have? Uh, actually, I just want to mention Jim, Jim Hodges mm -hmm. um, had a question for it was in the attic with Jim. Yes. Was that Wednesday? Yesterday, yes. see the milk bottle. Did you see the milk bottle? I saw the milk bottle. Do you know? It's West's Dairy, right? Burn. Yeah. So, so is does Jim have an idea of what time period that's from? I don't think they know. He and Claudia have put their heads together to see what they could find out, and they haven't been able to research. You know, usually in past city directories and past things like that, you can find businesses listed i mean if you go to it to a 1940 city directory you'll find the dairies that were there but they haven't been able to find anything uh and there were a couple of people that commented on the website on the, not website on the facebook page i saw who somebody who remembered something um off of 70 that that he remembered was a dairy but didn't remember if it was this specific west dairy but okay uh, so so if, you, if people are watching this and you know where west's dairy was in New Bern, then let let the Historical Society know 638-8558 or comment on this stream and I will let them know. No. So yeah, you can see the bottle if you go to the Facebook page for the Historical Society, you can see the picture of the milk bottle. Yeah, and it says clearly West Dairy. Um, you know, Pretty one interesting. Port. Yeah. And it's a neat old milk bottle. It's not printed. It's like embossed. So the letters and the image is raised on the glass. Mm -hmm. So it's probably older than, you know, the 50s when they were, you know, Elsie the cow on the milk bottle. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's probably early 20th century, but I don't know. And, 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 you know, Jim and Claudia are far better at that than I am. And they haven't been able to pin it down. So that's why they said, hey, folks, what do you know? They're history sleuths. That's right. Yeah. Well, uh, New Bern now is really excited because we have a, a media coordinator. Ah. Cindy Papia. And she oh. is just rocking it. Um, she it was her idea to come up with the um, youth column um, for <laughs> for over a decade now. I've been trying to figure out how to um, bring involve the youth with mm -hmm. Newburn now. Um, I don't have children, so I'm kind of, uh, I, I've been racking my brain and Cindy's like, well, let's do this. So I'm going to read what, what we put out there. And it's, um, we're, it's a youth section for young people under 18 years old. Kids and teens can send artwork and drawings, photographs they've taken, poems, short essays, singing, dancing, cooking, even yo-yo tricks, science <laughs> projects, playing the instrument, performing magic and in videos, mm -hmm. and whatever else they want to share, it's their time to shine. Um, one thing I do want to mention, uh, if it's a video and there's music playing in the background, mm -hmm. um, that's probably copyrighted, and I don't want the video taken down from, from mm -hmm. Our, I, I don't want to go on Facebook jail or YouTube jail, so please don't use background music. Um, and she said, also parents, just let us know how you want your child's name to appear. First name and last initial, full name, initials only, first name, their age. 
-hmm. If you'd like and any messages, comments about their submission to youth at newburnnow.com. So yeah, that's gonna be it's exciting. Yeah, I'm excited. And speaking of youth, um, I'm I'm working um, in the process of dictating all of the different or, or you know transcribing all of the notes that I took during that children's business fair mm -hmm. at the fairgrounds. Right. I more artwork. We, more artwork, and uh, and we'll be writing about this little this young artist, this young entrepreneur. Uh, in the very near future. So um, I, I discovered a, a artificial intelligence uh, transcribing service, oh. which isn't, yeah, so, so it's private. And mm -hmm. uh, so it's gonna make my job a lot easier. And well, also- you just, you just speak and it, and it transcribes. Yeah, it transcribes it. You put in the, you upload the audio mm -hmm. and it puts it in text format and depending on people's accent, you can press on that word mm -hmm. with, you know, listening and you could figure out what they said. Um, so, you All know, right. if, if they, if it's dictated wrong, you know, it, it depends mm -hmm. on people's accents. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, Cause I mean, our youth are our future leaders and it's important that we, that way we can discover what's happening in our community with with the the kids and share it with people who have kids and they don't you know they don't realize the different resources that are available so cool. looking so forward to that mm -hmm. be watching for that on newburn now yeah and one more thing um before we bring um uh, bring our first guest in is Actually, let me announce the question real quick. Okay. Today's trivia question for a, a gift certificate to a local business, Mitchell Hardware, <laughs> <laughs> um, is where is Jonestown located in the greater New Bern area? Hmm. So that's the question and answer in our, our little stream here. And uh, if you answer correctly, you'll win the gift certificate. So um, okay. I go around every morning, I've been publishing like the, the day, what day it is. For mm -hmm. instance, today was Love People Day, Chewing Gum Day, Mud Pack Day, which I didn't know what that was until I researched. It's like a mud facial, I mm -hmm. guess, and Hot Mold Cider Day. So um, I add whatever the day is mm -hmm. and then the day's weather and then a picture and it's it's hard to figure out like what to share you know there's so many different things around our area and right now you all are seeing the pictures from my you know what i see if people share those your pictures with us mm -hmm. you're it's from multiple people you know it's the communities this you know what the community sees and that's always been our vision from the very beginning is, you know, information from all the different people in our community or as many people as possible. So if you send us your photos, email info at newburnnow.com, I will be sure to credit your photos. I don't believe in uh, taking people's intellectual property. And uh, so send us the, the photos and we will include those and it will also save me some time from <laughs> driving around looking for something new to take a picture of. So, yeah. Right. Anyway, I I think it's time. What do you think, Kathy? I think so. I think and, so. Are you ready to push the button? Yeah. Our, our first interview is okay. with Dr. Right. Jim Ross. And right. let's bring him in. Got him coming. Dr. Jim Ross is president of Pamlico Community College, and we are very happy to have him with us here. There we go. I see it coming almost. <laughs> and there we go. I can tell it's there. Wait for it. Yep. All right. Pamlico Community College is what was what was the story there? The happiest 
they're the most satisfied. They're the. Dr. Jim Ross is going to tell us about it. Have to tell us about that. Um, hi there. Are you uh, are you able to see me? Uh, we can't see you, sir, but we can hear oh. you. Um, let me see if I can figure this out. Uh, <laughs> Maybe thank you. Fine. Thank you for having me on. It might be that it ends up uh, just with my voice. Uh, let's see. Maybe Start my video. Yeah. Um, okay. So it's telling me failed to start the video camera. Please select another video camera in settings. Well, okay. that, uh, let's see if we can do that. Are you going to teach us how to get go through this Zoom thing? I mean... <laughs> We've been doing it for a while, but every single day, every, every time we go to Zoom, something comes up. So we're yeah. still in the learning uh, phase. <laughs> well, I may, I may, uh, if it's okay with you, just uh, uh, rely on my voice here and uh, and see if we can figure this out. I think I'm hitting all the buttons I should, and it's just not working. Let's see, I'm asking to start video. You know what? I'm gonna. Go ahead and make you a host as long as you don't um, delete us from. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I can't guarantee anything on my part. <laughs> Let's see. Does that work? I don't know. Let's see okay. here. Start my video. Did it? It may work. Let's see here. No. You know, there are, there are Zoom gods and video gods, and sometimes they're just not happy with us. <laughs> you never can tell what they're going to do. You, know, huh. you, you never know what's going to happen on with the pod squad. I mean, <laughs> people come, people go, people freeze. Um, yeah. So, Dr. Ross, um, you're the president of Pamlico Community College. I am. And you, I recently um, read an article from Michelle. Um, your uh Michelle, can you pronounce her last name? I don't want to butcher it. Nor Norbert? Uh Michelle Novere. Oh, I had it right. Wow. You did, wow. yes. Great. All right. <laughs> well, she she sent the, an article about um the high morale at Pamco Community College. It soars to a remarkable 95%. And how how did you manage to do that? <laughs> okay. Hey, can you see me now? Because I'm seeing that there's actually it looks like there's some video there. Uh, can you can you see? Can you hear me? I can see you. I just asked you to start the video. Okay. And we all go like. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so you can you can still hear me though. Yes. And, and can you see me now? No. Can't okay, see so we'll, we'll we'll rely on uh, an audio interview. Uh, the uh, the article uh, was talking about a uh, survey that we conduct at the college every year, and many colleges around the country do it. And it uh, asks all employees a number of questions, and one of which is dealing with morale at the uh, college. And uh, we follow it very, very carefully because it's so important. Uh, in general, I think the happier the employees are, the better the service is. And our culture here at the college, I'm going to keep hitting buttons to see if I can <laughs> actually bring the. Now, if I go off, you'll know it's because of my limited uh, technology skills. I want to hit one button here. Uh, it didn't work. Um, can you still hear me? We can yes. still hear you. Yes, okay. Sir. So, uh, so the remarkable part about it is uh, the culture that has been established here due to the great faculty and staff we have here at the college has been very, very positive. And we have come in with a, a thought that the better we treat our employees, the better, not, not just because it's going to end up with them doing a better job, but it's the right thing to do. And those of us who believe that we're here on earth to do God's will. Uh, that includes treating people well and making their lives better. And what has happened is that we have a remarkable group of employees who really are uh, somewhat different than the national norm 
where Gallup did a poll and 30% of people nationwide in any field believe they have high morale, about 30%. And in higher education, it's probably about the same. Well, here at the college this past year, uh, after our morale has gone up each year, according to our surveys, we had a 95% uh, of our employees uh, say they have high morale. That's and wonderful. We, wow. Which is remarkable. And, um, and, it, and it makes us feel so good because what has happened when people, when our employees know that they're appreciated, know that their, uh, their efforts uh, are making a difference and they come to work. And you mentioned Michelle Novier. She told me about two weeks ago, that she loves coming to work every day. And um, that's what we want. And when that happens, then magical things happen. So with us going up to 95%, and um, uh, a little over five years ago, our, our surveys indicated we were at 55%. That's still pretty good. Uh, so going from 55% to 95% in uh, five years is really commendable for our employees. And the thing about that is along the way, uh, we have experienced, as you might suspect, increases in performance that are documented. And one of which is uh, graduation rate has been among the leaders in the nation where during this period where our morale has gone up so much, our graduation rate has gone up more than 20% in four years, which is a remarkable increase for graduation rate for a college. So we're now we're about twice the rate of the national average as far as our students graduating, uh, which is the, the ball game. And we're here to serve students. So it's something that I'm really, really excited about. Uh, I love it to, to be able to come, come on with you and praise our employees. I see myself as the lead cheerleader for the faculty and staff of the college and our students are getting an outstanding education because of them. And I think morale is a big part of it. And I'll keep hitting buttons along the way too to see, <laughs> to see if I can figure out how to get on here. Well, I think it's amazing. I, you know, I I learned that back um, through what was it? Total quality leadership or total quality management in in the service. Um, that you know, if you if you were lead by example and you're willing to to do what you're asking your your staff to do, then it's going to be much easier because. Oh my gosh, there you are. Yay. Are you really? <laughs> Do you? Well, awesome. Wonderful. Yay, yay. <laughs> we'll celebrate this day every year that we work this out. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I just think it's terrific. And we can see you. Yay. Yay. <laughs> gosh. Well, do you have a, a large staff and faculty there? We do not. Uh, uh, we, uh, we have a dedicated uh, group of employees, a uh, small number of employees. And uh, because of that, we have people who are really doing two, three, four, five jobs. And one thing that you'll find with our uh, employees here, they're so dedicated and, and that has shown up when I mentioned the, uh, the rate of graduation going up, et cetera, et cetera. One thing that's also gone up is our recognition nationwide and because of their hard work. And what's happened is uh, Wallet Hub uh, this past year did a ranking of uh, community colleges nationwide for student educational outcomes, so student success, graduation, uh, transfer rates, persistence, this kind of thing. And they showed us to be number one in the nation wow. um, among all community colleges wow. and also uh, Smart Asset, a national finance firm which does rankings of different things, mm -hmm. also ranked at community colleges with overall performance and, and, and both of these using U.S. Department of Education data. Mm -hmm. And we came out as the number two community college nationwide overall so what has occurred is that with this morale going up and people coming in and, and having fun and 
really, really seeing that they can make the world better one person at a time. If you or someone from your family came in here to, to go to school, what you would find would be, first of all, we would have a faculty member who would be assigned to you as your advisor from day one throughout the entire time you're here. We also would have a staff member who would be your student success coach from day one the whole time you're here. In addition to that, you would have people at this college who would recognize you as the reason we exist. I mean, we're here to, to serve students and the community. And we work really, really hard to do that. And whenever you come in, you will find employees who are willing to go above and beyond the call of duty. For example, many of our students come in and they maybe have not been in college for 20 years. Maybe they've been out of the workforce uh, for whatever reason, decide, well, I'm gonna go back. Well, along with doing that, there's quite a bit of nervousness. Uh, mm -hmm. How's it gonna go? And on and on. And we also have a lot of students who come in who maybe in high school didn't do all that well. Well, we're here to give a second chance and a third chance, as well as we have a lot of students who really uh, excelled in school as well. What we do right off the bat is we, we put our hand out, so to speak, so that we're in partnership with these potential students. And the first thing that we do with them is to try to let them know, hey, we're in this together. And to let them know they can do this. And by them having a sense of confidence that, yeah, okay, I can do it, it translates to them actually doing it. And it's a magical experience. And for me as president, to see this happen is just really a great, great blessing. You can tell you all have done a great job. If, if folks want to find out more about Pamlico Community College, who do they reach out to? How do they do that? Well, they could, uh, they could give us a call uh, at the college or they could uh, go on our website and, uh, and, uh, or they could uh, call me or stop by. And, um, uh, but one thing that they will find when they come, um, one thing we, we do want to do is to, to say that if people are wanting to go on to the university uh, to earn a bachelor's, master's, et cetera, one of the great secrets in higher education is that in general, you can get every bit as good an education at a community college And North Carolina has some of the finest community colleges in the whole nation. And in fact, this region, the community colleges all around here are outstanding. But the great secret in higher education is you don't have to go off to a university day one you can get your first two years at a community college. You can save a ton of money. For example, uh, U.S. Department of Education data shows that the average cost for universities nationwide, all universities, public, private, et cetera, uh, tuition and fees, $24,000 a year. Now, at a community college locally, for example, ours, it's not $24,000 a year. It's $2,400 a year. You will get, I guarantee you, you will get the same quality instruction. The instructors are great at, at community colleges nationwide. And instead of going in debt, you know, why go in debt? Then you have that money as you go on. Uh, so that, that's one thing, thing to think about. The other thing is not everybody should go to college and plan to go on, get a bachelor's, master's, et cetera. It is just as valuable for our society, for people who want to work with their hands. Mm -hmm. And community colleges really specialize in that as well. So not only do you get the chance to get an outstanding education if you want to go on to a university for the bachelor's, et cetera, and become an accountant, attorney, doctor, uh, whatever, and, and work with your mind, but if you want to uh, become a welder or other than working with your hands, you're going to serve a great need of society and you're going to probably make a, a, a good deal of money as well. And there are a lot of job opportunities out there and you can do that by going to community colleges as well. So that's the first thing. 
Now, I would like to say something. Over the past 10 years, the public opinion polls have shown there has been a tremendous uh, decline in the number of people who see a value in higher education. And, and I can see why. I mean, we, we see $1.4 trillion in debt, student loans that people have across the country. We also see at the same time, we see a lot of things going on in higher education that people listen to and, and they don't like hearing it. Uh, well, the thing I, I would ask people to do is to, um, to think about it. And even if you don't wanna go on to get your bachelor's, master's, et cetera, to think about getting a skill because that's really going to help you in your life and uh, and to look at the various careers out there that you can work with your hands and go on and, and get a good job, make a good wage and make the world better. But I come from a very humble background. Um, my, uh, my mom and dad went to eighth grade, they graduated from eighth grade and they were fantastic parents. Uh, we were poor, uh, but we did not know it. And uh, we were happy, uh, loved. There was so much love in the, in the household. But my mom especially talked about us going on and getting our education to, to go on to, uh, to do well in our careers. And I, and I think it's extremely important that people consider that as they go forward. I think people have the opportunity in this country that others in other countries only dream about having. And I think often we take those opportunities for granted. I happen to believe that this is the greatest country that's ever existed um, in, in the world. And one of the things that goes along with that are the phenomenal opportunities for people like myself who come from very humble uh, beginnings and, and poor backgrounds to be able to, to work hard, get a great education and to work with other people and to, um, to do well in a career. Now we yeah. should thank you for coming and sharing with us today. That's, you know, it's, it's great to know how, how, you know, the way people feel really translates into the job that it turns out and how much it really helps the community. So we're, we're glad to have you with us today. Yes. Well, well, and, oh, I'm, and I'm sorry, Dr. Ross. Um, you have you'll have to come back because you're an inspiration, and we only got to see you halfway through. So <laughs> we would love to have you back. Um, we have another guest in the waiting room, but we really appreciate you taking the time today because this is just wonderful. We need good news, and you you've you've created a, a great atmosphere. You and your team have really done a wonderful job and thank you so much. And may, I, may I thank you for what you're doing. Our world needs more positive news. Uh, yeah, there's some bad things out there, but I think there's room for optimism and thank you for getting the word up, out about the good things going on in our community. Th thank you, sir. And you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, you too. Uh, okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. The button worked. Good. Yes. Okay. Now we have in the waiting room, we have, you may know her as Nelda Coates, but we also know her as Katie Brownell from a few years ago with Extraordinary Women. And she's the president of the Coastal Women's Forum. And she's also a loan officer with Movement Mortgage. And Wendy's going to push the button. Let's see if it works. This There we go. Yeah. Oh, and, Nelda. you know, I, I know I've heard Nelda's name from our dear friend and fellow squad member, um, Jane Bellucci. <laughs> and, but I'm like, I know, I know that name, Mel the Coats, Mel the Coats. And I saw you perform and yes, that yeah, right. that's why. So, and you're the president of the Coastal Women's Forum. So yes, I am. Here. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us and for your patience. We appreciate that. No problem. Thank you for having me. It was very interesting here. I live in Pamlico County, so I oh, love wow. hearing about the community college down there. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, we're right across the river. It's like, come on, we need to get over this, I don't know, bridge phobia or whatever it's called from, from, from you know, downtown New Vernon, James City to going across the news bridge <laughs> between the bridges let's work to yeah so yeah. 
Nelda, how are you today? I am wonderful. I am wonderful. Thank you for having me. Finally. Yeah, I've, I've been meaning to get you on and thank you for joining us. So. Sure, sure. Yeah. So what is your message? Uh, the president, I know with the Coastal Women's Forum, um, I was a member for uh, quite a few, a few years back uh, when, and the president always had a message. And is there a special message that you have? Yeah, that's uh, thank you for asking that. So um, yeah, Coastal Women's Forum is a women's networking group that um, many people are not aware that there is a local women's networking group. We meet twice a month. Um, our purpose is networking, education, and encouragement. So um, each year, the president um, has a theme as well as a charity. My theme for this year is charting a new course. Um, all of us coming out of these 16, 18 months of isolation and figuring out what do our businesses look like? What does our work look like? How are we getting back into volunteering? So we're um, focusing our speakers and um, emphasis this year on uh, ways to get involved, how other entrepreneurs are doing things, um, different opportunities that you might have of getting involved in the community. Um, I'm a sailor and so uh, that river is very near and dear to me. And um, so I thought with a nautical theme of charting a new course, we could help our members um, navigate those waters, so to say. <laughs> Very nice, very nice. Yeah. I really like that, yeah. So who's, what's your charity? My charity is Sound Rivers, ah. um, which is dedicated to the health of the, and education about um, keeping our river clean. And it's important to us for our economy here. Um, you know, uh, and Coastal Women's Forum doesn't just pull from the New Bern area. We have members across Pamlico County, Craven, Carteret, Jones, we pull from a, a big area and all of us have, are impacted by the river, by the Noose River. And um, our featured speakers in December for each of our meetings will be a representative from Sound Rivers that will um, educate us a little bit more and let us know how we can get involved. We um, also hope to do, to participate in a river cleanup at some time during this year once they announce those dates. So well we have I know we have the the Craven County Clean Sweep is also for waterways and uh, the roadways. Yep. Um, and that's on October 2nd, since you mentioned it at well, 9 a.m. No. And that's at Craven County uh, admin building the, the the parking lot. So yeah. Um, but getting back to Sound Rivers, yes, that's a, a wonderful organization. Um, I'm, a, I'm a strong um, supporter and, and I love uh, Katie and, but the, the swim guide they put out during the summertime was so valuable and all the volunteers is just great, great charity of choice, so. Right, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Now, are you just beginning your your presidency or are you uh actually our fiscal year starts july 1st okay. and runs through june 30th we don't meet the month of july but we meet uh august through june we meet the first tuesday night of every month at the chelsea at 5 30 and then we meet the third Wednesday of every month at the New Bern Golf and Country Club at 11.30. Um, we do 30 minutes of networking and then we do an hour dedicated to a meal and a guest speaker at each meeting. So um, reservation is required. Um, you just pay for your meal our, our, uh, and it's always catered, you know, it's buffet or something like that. And um, our dues are $40 a year. So it's a very affordable organization. It's just a great way to get involved and meet other women in the area. Um, if you're new um, and you don't have to be a business owner, we're not looking for that type of thing. We're just 
you need just women. You just need to be a woman <laughs> and we will welcome you. So you, you can attend the meal and the meeting, even if you're not a member. So yes, you can, you can go and attend find out. twice as a guest. Absolutely. Okay. And then after that, we ask that you join to continue to attend. Um, so we, um, our speakers for October, were uh, featuring entrepreneurs. We've got uh, a gal, um, Priscilla Livingstone, who was a, uh, owned a wine shop down in Moorhead City. She's going to talk about being a business owner at our evening meeting. And at the daytime meeting, we have a panel of three different uh, women Kelly Michaud, who owns Solid Rock Accounting, mm -hmm. Camilla Wheeler, that owns Nautical Wheelers, and Brooke White with Sound Fitness will be a panel discussion on how they have navigated COVID-19, how they have emerged and what they are doing to, um, to chart a new course. <laughs> so. And that's a, great, that's a great lineup of, mm -hmm. of ladies. And yes. yeah, yeah. De definitely. And whenever you do have the speakers, it, it, they're so informative. It's, it's a great, um, it's, it's very similar to the New Bern Lunch and Learn as far as you, you eat and you just really learn a lot of information. So absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Contact information you want to share, phone number or sure. Facebook? Sure. So yeah, um, well, we do have a Facebook page, Coastal Women's Forum. We have a website, coastalwomensforum.com, and you can register for the uh, meetings at that website. Um, my personal number is 639-1616. If anybody wants to talk about the uh, benefits of membership and what we do, I'd love to, to do that. All right. And, and I just want to mention, I, I'm not sure if we mentioned it. I'm sure you did, Kathy, but just to double check, you're also a loan officer with Movement Mortgage? Movement yes. Mortgage. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, right. very busy these days. <laughs> I can't imagine. I, and I love the bear picture behind you. I can't see what else. Oh, we those are you. all, since I live in Pamlico. Awesome. Those are all wildlife photographs from uh, photographers in Pamlico County. And those were all taken in Pamlico County. Wonderful. So, well, yeah. you know, thanks for noticing. <laughs> I maybe we back back. I'm not sure if you knew this, but we organized a camping trip. It was Thea Kincaid and myself, and it was a group of us that did a camping trip over at the KOA, like way over in Bridgeton, <laughs> and uh, with the Coastal Women's Forum, and it was just like it was a fun like we did like leadership things and we just that's so cool so maybe we can do that again and uh maybe do it in the croatan where all the wildlife is oh i love oh, the hike over there. there yeah yeah that'd <laughs> be Pam awesome or over in pamico county you've got yeah i'd love to hear more about places. that so all right well we'd love to catch uh, up with you uh, again so but for now we wish you a, a great rest of the day and thank, thank you, you for so joining much. us, Melda. I appreciate it. Enjoyed it so much. Bye. Uh -huh. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bye. All right. More applause. <laughs> okay. All right. Do you want to redo your question? Yeah. Okay. For y'all, all, all of you million of people watching us right now, the, the question is um, I'm looking for it. Jonestown. Okay, where is Jonestown located in New Bern? So it's it's within the New Bern area, and it's called Jonestown. And I'll give you a hint. It was one of those. I took a picture of the sign of Jonestown. The information. It was an informational, like a like a marker. Uh, and like I like history marker. Yeah, kind of. It was by from the family, but. I okay. saw it on the side of the road and I'm like, well, so I shared that on social media. You may remember. So, okay. Yeah. And if you win, if you answer correctly, you'll get a gift certificate to, to a local business, Mitchell Hardware. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell Hardware. All right. Good. Yeah. All right. Well, should we do some of these things that are happening? There's a lot happening. Here. Yeah. We got all kinds of events and, and if you, if you miss them, um, if if you want more details, check out newburnnow.com, our calendar. 
Uh, but but the first through the third and uh, 31st of October is Mums the Word exhibition. And Ben Lindemann is in the director's gallery. And uh, it's both are free open to the public. And it's Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to 5 p.m. at the Bank of the Arts uh, located at 317 Middle Street. All right, on the 1st of October, which is tomorrow, is the 2021 Resilience Symposium from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Riverfront Convention Center and is presented by Jones County Resilience Cooperative and the Coastal Coalition for Substance Abuse Prevention. Yeah, and also on the 1st, I hope they're not sold out. I tried to confirm before this, but um, it's the 36th Annual Chicken Barbecue Fundraiser. And yep. that's presented by uh, the Fern Lodge, and it's going to be from 11 to 2 at the York Wright Temple on Glen Burnie. For more information, call 671-4967. All right. Also on the first, Beach Boogie and Brews at the Farmer's Market at 5.30 p.m. Give them a call, 637-3111. Yeah, and I just want to give a shout out. There's a grand opening. It's a uh, craft, Crafty Bear Market inside the New Bern Mall. It's a pop-up shop. And if they're going to have the grand opening, the ribbon cutting and that with the New Bern Chamber. And that's tomorrow. Uh, did I say what time? So, no, it doesn't have the time. But it, it's going to be uh, featuring 30 vendors, I think. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. The first to the third, that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Clue continues at the uh, New Bern Civic Theater. Give them a call and get your ticket, 633-0567. All right. And the Craven County Clear, Clean Sweep is the second at 9 a.m. Uh, you mentioned that at the Craven County Administration Building. Meet there at 9 and give them a call at 633-1477. Yes. And I... I spoke with the gentleman that's organizing the Vance Burl Strawberry Jam Festival. It's still on this weekend, the 2nd, October 2nd, from 10 to 4. They're going to have a parade at 10 a.m. So head yeah. up to Vanceboro. It's going to be a grand old time. So Strawberry Jam. Okay. Yeah. Also on the 2nd is Bingo Night at the Craven County JC's Fairgrounds, presented by the Craven County JC's at 6 to 9. And then okay. on the 3rd, Nicholas Sparks, The Wish, ticketed book signing at 3 p.m. at Books A Million. Go to nicholassparks.com to get a ticket, so. Okay, also on the third, Rock This City concert with Nashville recording artist Tom Yankton. That's five o'clock at the New Bern Riverfront Convention Center, benefiting Realize U252, okay. And then there's a New Bern drum circle on the 3rd, on October 3rd, from 6 to 7.30 p.m. And at, that's at Union Point Park near the gazebo. And lastly, Nexus Poets Open Mic Night is 7 p.m. on the 5th of October at New Bern Unitarian Fellowship, located at 308 Meadow Street, Meadows Street. Okay. For details, visit nexuspoets.com. Okay. We had to, we're going to have to close early. Okay. So um, if you, okay, the trivia question, any, any answers? Where is Jonestown located in New Bern? Anyone? Anyone? I, I, you know, I would guess Jones County, but that's not in New Bern. So I don't know. You know, I, it's less than a football field away from where I sit right now. Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's in the Pleasant Hill community. So it's right off of 55. And uh, yeah, it is, uh, it says Jacob and Julius and Lee, Jacob Julius and Lee Jones purchased two and a half acres uh, of land in 1941. The seeds they sowed laid the foundation for several of their children to own their homes on more than seven acres of land in the Pleasant Hill community. So. Neat. So that's a neat historic piece. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, we want you to check out the New Bern music calendar. That's always there. And it's a great resource. So you can follow the bands and the farmer's market is every Saturday. Check them out. Um, anything else, Wendy? Is that a wrap? 
that's a wrap, Kathy. All right, we're <laughs> back on October the 7th. We want us to want you to send us your announcements, stories, and events, and we'll add them to the calendar on New Bird Now's website. Let us know if you'd like to be a guest, or if you have any questions or suggestions by calling 252-259-6853, or send an email to info at newburnnow.com. And this video and audio will be uploaded to newburnnow.com, to YouTube, to iTunes, and wherever you listen to your podcast. Uh, you can listen to the show on Newburn's news talk radio station, WNOS 103.9 FM, by tuning in every Wednesday at 8 a.m. and again at 5 p.m. And I think that's it. Well, thank you, Kathy. You're awesome. Thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. And have a great day. Thank you all, folks. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you, Wendy. I appreciate it. Thank you.